Alright, in this video, I'm going to be focusing on movies and the TV. And this open portal that is the, actually the TV and production companies. And, and these production companies literally tell you who owns these movies. Right? The worst open eye, open mouth, open portal is their TV. One of your worst ones. I think the TV is way more dangerous than its CERN and all that stuff. Because you are using your free will to watch TV all day, right? You can't help if scientists are doing a bunch of weird experiments. But you can help if you're, use, you're using your free will to watch TV movies all day. I'm not saying it's a sin to watch a movie, okay? But you cannot watch TV all day long. That is a trick. That TV has become your god if you are watching it all day. God uses play on words. There's a reason why it's called watching TV. Just like with my last video... I was connecting clocks and stuff to this to this evil stuff. It's all it's all designed and worded like that on purpose. For God does that on purpose. All right? He does that to warn you what who these things belong to. What what who has dominion over these things? The watchers, right? Which are the original fallen angels. It's the devil. It's all it's not a coincidence that it's called watches. And it's why it's called watching TV. It's not. God is uses places those words in in, in our consciousness and in through and over time to warn you about this stuff. There's a he puts a rhythm to things. You are the why is it called watching TV? Because it belongs to the watchers. Alright? The blah blah it belongs to the devil. You can turn it around on him. You can watch good things, right? You can watch things about Jesus. You can do that. But 99% of people watch TV and they're and they are being programmed. Why do you think it's called a TV program? Because you who's being programmed? You're the one being programmed. All right, you're the one being programmed. Why do you think it's called make believe? Oh, it's just make believe. Don't worry about it. The devil's making you believe that this stuff is okay. That that these these people, these characters are innocent and it's, so it's just make believe it's not real. No, it you're putting real energy towards something. Your real energy is going towards the demonic realm when you are watching violent movies and movies about sex and stuff. Just because you're not actually doing it doesn't mean you're not actually giving that energy to someone something, all right? What um, when you worship something, what does worship mean? When you're putting your time, energy, and emotions towards something that's not God, that other thing has become your God. All right, the devil is very tricky, and and technically, your TV is a dead thing. Is it alive? No, it's dead. Can your TV and your phones and technology love you back? Can they love you back? They can make you feel love. They can reflect love on yourself and God's love on yourself, but. You are projecting your love onto the actual TV. So, can they love you back? No, it's a dead thing. Alright? It's an inanimate object. So, why are you loving it? Alright? There's a real loving God who loves you. And you're putting all... You're wasting all your... God, where you're wasting your time and your worship and your love and your energy on something that can't love you back. And it is definitely a sin to make an idol of your TV. Okay? I'm not saying you can't watch a movie every now and then. But anyway, I'm going to talk about some of this other imagery in movies, and I'm also going to be talking about, I'm going to be using movies and TV to explain that. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about, seeking whom he may devour. So, I already went over this in my last videos. This open mouth lion is, is all over ancient cultures. It's definitely a visual proof that the devil is a roaring lion all right and this is a bit this is more current ones the devil will put this and put this in movies and it's him you tell me this is all just a coincidence and that the open mouth lion is a portal into hell basically right i went over that and i'm gonna show you that in these movies so i'm just gonna show you pictures of this and you should know that this, this is a roaring lion that's in front of every movie this MGM roaring lion, lion in a golden gateway. Hello? Do you think that's a coincidence? It's not. This is symbolism. Alright? God gave us symbolism, the understanding of symbolism, 
to help us and warn us. This is a roaring lion in front of movies. Who has dominion over this movie? Who has dominion over Hollywood? The roaring lion, the devil, right? And if you will keep being obsessed with these movies, you are going to go into this gateway, all right? This lion's gate. Literally, it's called a lion's gate. And look, these are supposed to be gears of a clock. It's a like gears opening the doorway for you. These are gears of a, of a clock. Get it? It's opening the gateway for you. And it's literally called Lion's Gate. Uh, it's not a coincidence. These are gateways. Go ahead and watch. Be obsessed with these movies. You're being warned that these are going to lead you to somewhere bad. All right? And those are not gateways to heaven, okay? Those are not clouds of heaven. These are gateways where the smoke is. All right? Do you see that that picture I'm trying to paint here? The devil says he, he tries he tries to convince you that you're on your way to heaven, where the clouds are, but you're really going to where the smoke is. All right? He's the lord of the smoke, not the clouds. Hmm. I wonder who this is. This is just Ishtar. This is Ishtar. You can call her Samaramis, you can call her Ishtar, you can call her Ceres. The Greek god Ceres is, is just based off, based off of Ishtar, okay? She has many names. She has like 200 names. But it's literally just based off of the same Whore of Babylon typology. Alright? She, and it literally tells you that she's a light bearer. She's holding a torch. Alright? She's the same thing the Statue of Liberty is based off of. And uh, the uh, one of the translations for Lucifer is a light bearer. He's holding a light. She's just a fem the female counterpart of Lucifer. All right, she's a fe Lucifera. She's a female Lucifer. And it literally tells you that these angels are holding torches. There's good ones and there's bad ones. Okay, there's a battle going on. Do you think this these movies are God is approving of half these movies? No way. All right, this is a, the Greek god Ceres, which is just based off of the Babylonian god Ishtar. All right, this is Lucifer, the female Lucifer. So go ahead and go into, and those are just, those are not clouds behind her. Those are, that's smoke. All right, these are lords of the fire and smoke, not of the heaven. All right, and back then they called her the queen of heaven. She's not the queen of heaven. She, they, they, they literally said that she lived in hell for half the year. <laughs> Okay, she was lord of the underworld for half the year. But for some reason, they still call us queen of heaven. The devil and his angels, they like to mock God. They like to pretend they're God. They like to pretend they're leading you to heaven. They like to pretend they're guiding your way. When they're actually just leading you into hell, okay? And they're guiding you to the wrong place. The Bible talks about good people holding tortures in their... Right hands, left hands, yes. okay. they're there to confuse you. The Bible just tells you to look out for them. He, they teach you how to look out for them. Just like in this picture. Oh, the devil is saying, oh, that's me. I'm here to guide you to heaven. He, this this woman, this female Lucifer, is not guiding you to heaven, okay? She's not guiding your way with that torch. She's there to set you on fire with that torch, okay? It's, it's a trick. Um, th these things are guiding your way into to Babylon into the pit this is a good picture this is just a basic older oldish picture of Lucifer the light bearer which is a star coming over a mountain all right this is this is a very old depiction of this uh, it has to do a lot with the ancient world the stars and eyes mean the same thing that's why there's eyes on top of the pyramid or eyes on top of the mountain or a star on top of a pyramid, or a star on top of a mountain. Because eyes and in the ancient world, eyes and stars were very similar. And I will make a whole nother video about this white horse pegasus unicorn stuff. It's all it all links to the Antichrist and his and his white horse. You, you know what I mean from the book of Revelations? So that's what this is. It's just mix the devil will just mix up all this evil crap. Alright. 
this mythological white horse, whether it be a pegasus or a unicorn or just a white horse, is very symbolic. I'll make another video about that, but that's what this is. It's just a, the white horse tri-star on top of the pyramid. And this is just one world religion typology symbolism. All under one one rule, one prince of the universe, the what the prince of this world, the universal prince. And now I'm just gonna show you some popular movies and how their God is warning you about them. You think you might think this is just um, you know, coincident symbolism, but it's not. I'll make a whole nother video of how God explains how believing in coincidences is, is actually evil. Alright? Just thinking that this stuff is a big coincidence is actually against God. Believing in coincidences is ungodly. Alright? I will point that out in a different video, but this is not all just a coincidence. It is not okay to for you to be obsessed with TV characters and movie stars. There's a movie there's a reason why we call them movie stars, okay? Um not only there, you not only are you just being distracted from learning about Christ, because that is the only way you can get to heaven. The devil doesn't care if you're just entertained your whole life. Is, you know what I mean? He wants you distracted. But not only that, you're giving your energy. You're giving your real energy to the demonic realm when you are obsessed with these movies. Because your energy always goes somewhere. All right? It doesn't matter if it's make-believe or not real or real. In hell, listen to me, in hell... Everything is real and make-believe, all right? You can't even tell the difference. Every mythological symbolism and reality is down there, all right? Your idols come alive down there. You will see what you've been doing. You are really putting your energy into a different realm, and you will go with that energy when you die, all right? You will go into that dimension. So you are not just blind. You're not just doing something innocent when you're just putting your real emotions into these sh movies and shows all right it goes somewhere and if it's not directed if you're love and if it's, if it's about love if it's not if it's not directing you towards jesus guess where it's going okay energy never dies right it always transforms it never ends all right so i'm gonna show you some symbolism and some movies and, and it's not a, this is not just coincidence all right I haven't. I don't watch um, current movies too often, but I've watched a few, and but these are some older ones, but they're um, popular ones. So I hope you get my meaning. The Lion King. Which roaring lion on top of a mountain do you think this movie's about? All right, even when he's a young lion the whole time, you guys. God has multi-dimension, dimensional meanings. He knew every movie we were going to be making. He knew every movie the devil was going to inspire people to make. He knew how the devil was going to distract your kids and, and, and as adults. Okay? To, for you not even to think about God. Alright? So, again, I want to say it's not bad to watch a movie. But if you don't know Jesus, then yeah, you're going to have to pay for all this stuff. Alright? If, if you've... <laughs> God doesn't expect you, you to believe. If you are a believer, if you believe in Jesus, you shouldn't have to be worried about freaking out every time you watch a movie, all right? If you have never even thought about Jesus, this is a warning for you, okay? Um, anyway, so who, what roaring lion do you think this is about? Well, it's just a nice story about a lion and, you know, he loses fat. I, this movie, I like Lion King. I'm not saying I hate this movie and it sucks, because, but it's... It's all just distraction. It's all getting you to think this stuff is okay. And like the a monkey, the monkey is like a witch. Okay? You know the part when he, you know, he thinks Simba's dead. He grabs a bunch of leaves from the air and the dust. And then he, when he gets the feathers and, and the dust and he puts it inside the turtle shell. This is witchcraft. This is black magic. And the devil just nor is nor making your kids realize, think that this is normal. That this is just, you know, fine. And so when they grow up, they think this stuff is okay. The devil's tricking you. He, he'll, and he'll, he's a good, what well, makes a good liar? He'll hide good morals in these movies, okay? 
be all mixed up with evil stuff, so you, you just think all of it's good. He's a good liar because he mixes up the truth with lies. He has good morals in these movies, but he mixes up with lies and it taints the whole movie. Alright? This is witchcraft. And just because you don't know that it is, doesn't mean that it's okay to, to think it's okay. The Wizard of Oz is a really bad one. It's all about Babylon and your trip to Babylon and Babylon is just hell. Alright? Um, of course, it dolls it up. You know, Hollywood and that stuff, it dolls up hell. It makes it seem like it's, so, like it's a good place to go. Like it's a good, like you want to go. Um, the Emerald City is about hell. It's about Babylon, all right? And there's a reason, there's a whole other reason why all these things are green. I'll talk about that later. But th this emerald color, this green color comes from the serpent's poison, okay? And then that's very, that's different. That's a, that's a different video right there. But the Emerald City is just Babel. It's just Babylon, all right? It's the Ishtar Gate. And it's all about, you know, these supernatural beasts dragging her, leading her to hell. That's what this, that's what these movies are, that's what this movie is about. It's not a coincidence. These supernatural beasts leading her right now. And she doesn't fight it, she goes right along with them. She thinks that's a, that's a good place to go. That's where she belongs. It, people think that, that what they're doing is what God wants them to do. Like it's okay to just do whatever you want all day. It's okay to be in the in a false religion. It's not. Okay, you're not you're you're the devil is tricking you. He's gently guiding you into hell. You wanna go. It's a big journey into hell. All roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to Babylon. Alright, you have to the only way out of it is to consciously choose Jesus. He's the only way that can get you out of it. To even get you to understand what I'm even talking about. You have to have the Holy Spirit to even understand what I'm saying. And it's really not that hard. All you have to do is repent and ask him to forgive you. And ask him to help you understand this stuff. I can try to explain it to you all day long. But only he can really get you to understand through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to understand what, what I'm saying. Okay. Anyway... And it's so funny because the Babylonian kings, like Nebuchadnezzar and all them, they had really curly beards, just like in the Wizard of Oz. He has a really curly beard, and he's, you know, at the end he became the king. And, you know, it's all just a reference. It's all just symbolism. All right, it's a hell symbolism. It's gl hell glorifying hell, making it seem like it's a good place to go. Like, ooh, I want to go there. I want to go to the Emerald City. Oh, you will. You'll go to the Emerald City, okay? <laughs> Trust me, but it's not going to be a fun place to go. Alright. The Matrix. The Matrix is the worst. Oh, I don't even know where to start with the Matrix. Alright. So, in the very beginning, or in the middle of the first Matrix, I believe. Anyway, so I right before, right, right when Neo goes into this new world... Right before he takes the pill, look what the, the chair he's sitting on. See those two open mouth lions? Just a coincidence, right? The Matrix is just another metaphor for going into hell, alright? It's oh I'm gonna go I'm gonna take up some pills to go into a portal into hell. It's a good idea. And see the, the imagery here, those two lions right here? This is why kings the, the, this is all. Less, this is why kings had two lions on their thrones. They were. This is all symbolism, okay? God's symbolism. Uh, all these kings of the earth. Guess where they all are now? All right. So yeah, the, the the two open mouth lions. Right before he took the pill, he took the two open mouth lions. Right here, he sat on the throne, and the Matrix is still the Emerald City. It's still Babylon. It's still a reference into, of hell. All right. And it's a warning about technology and witchcraft, too. All right. There's too many meanings in these movies. Warnings about what these movies are about. And also, go watch my hell testimony. I talk about. This movie scares me. This movie is so, this movie is so, so much about hell. I can't even. I don't even know where to start. 
watch my hell testimony and i talk a talk i talk a lot about how these things are glowing green they're emerald they're a greenish blue emerald color all right when i saw these things these demons okay and these spirits they had a, they had a green nebulous color to them a lot of them not every not every single one of them but a lot of them because that is supposed to be this the the serpent's poison is supposed to be green all right it's supposed to be emerald i'll talk about that later <clears throat> that's anyway so go watch my whole testimony and i talk about how there was weird symbols all over the walls and not on people's bodies and they were moving this all these movies are about hell weird symbol go watch it I t in hell i saw weird symbols all over the walls and on on your on people on my body and they were moving around okay these symbols were moving they it's like mark of the beast stuff but it's alive all right the, all these movies are about hell especially the matrix and if that's not just obvious enough for you their ship is literally called the nebuchadnezzar who's the king of babylon the you know he, he's the king of babylon is just a metaphor for the devil in hell okay this ship is literally called the nebuchadnezzar i mean it's just i don't even know what to say it's just a, too obvious in mark 3 11 um uh, that's when you know the, the the demons they felt onto christ and said you are the son of god you know that's it's all symbolism it's all put in these movies on purpose and at this was during the, the the almost the last matrix okay i know they just made a new one but this is the, the last one where he sacrificed his life to save the world right this is antichrist typology whenever you hear a story about another guy especially a guy that has a cross on him in the shape of a cross Dying for to save the world, it's antichrist myth typology, all right? Mythology. There's only one guy that died on a cross for you, and he really did it. It's not a made up story, all right? So, when you put your energy toward these characters, these characters are literally all based off of Babylonian evil stuff. This is the serpent and the eagle f formation. See, these are the serpent heads serpent heads on the left serpent heads on the right this cross in the middle of the wings okay this is sun disc witchcraft it's some sun sun disc iconography it's pebalonian witchcraft imagery it is not by accident these movies come from the devil it is not okay for you to watch these movies all day long and be think these movies are cool all right you are being tricked to think these characters are cool and they're not and and his name his name is um neo right neo anderson his name means new son of man all right this is like this is uh the antichrist doesn't just mean against Christ it means a new version of Christ a different version of Christ is Antichrist spirit if you are teaching and telling people a different version of Jesus or a new version of Jesus it's Antichrist typology his name means new son of man a new version of Christ it's Antichrist imagery all right it's not by accident these movies are come from these movies come from the devil Look at these pictures. Really think it's an, uh, a coincidence? Neo did not save, died to save the world. Okay, a man named Jesus Christ died, died, to save you. All right, and he really did it. It's not a made-up story. But people don't care about that. They'd rather go watch this movie about the devil. <laughs> and you wonder why God sent. But you know, at the end, you uh, people wonder why at, in the Book of Revelation. Why? It says the devil tr ends up tricking everybody and everyone ends up going to hell. <laughs> because they don't listen. They think this is a joke. They think this is just a coincidence. Oh, it's just a movie. It doesn't matter. It matters. 
you're putting your time, energy, emotion, your real time, your emotions are real, right? Your energy is real. It goes somewhere. That's worshiping the devil. And while I'm on it, this is sun disc worship. All right. This is sun disc solar wheel worship and it's a clock. You guys, it all links you back to the watchers. God has multi-dimensional warnings about these things. Multi-dimensional warnings. He warns you again and again and again what to look for. And if you're watching TV all day and not looking into history, you're never going to know this stuff. And just because you don't know doesn't mean you're not going to go to hell, okay? Your ignorance of this stuff isn't going to save you. This is sun disc worship. This is the cult of the sun altar worship black magic. And you saying you're doing it in the name of Jesus is making it blasphemous. It's not making it okay. If you are a Roman Catholic, you will not be going into heaven. The devil's tricking you. You aren't supposed to be doing what the Bible says, not what the Pope says. All right. And I know the Eucharist. And I know that the story they'll tell you. They'll tell you that you are reenacting the, you know, the Last Supper. And that's why you're eating the Eucharist. That's not what you're doing. Offering wine and bread and sun discs, um, a big mass for the sun disc is ancient Babylonian, is an ancient Babylonian witchcraft mass. All right. It comes way before Jesus and the devil is tricking you really bad. He's making you seem like you're, you're doing the Eucharist stuff. He's calling this the Eucharist. He's calling this the commute, the Last Supper, celebrating the Last Supper. It, it's not. Okay, this stuff was way before the Last Supper. And the devil is just making you think that you're doing it for Jesus. And you're really doing it for him. I'm warning you. I, I My family is Roman Catholic, okay? I, I'm not doing this to make you mad. I'm doing this to save you. If you don't listen to me, if you do not listen to me, you will go to hell. And I don't want you to go there, but you will go. You will go. Hosea 4.6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you've rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. You not knowing this stuff, and me telling you and you rejecting it, is going to lead you to hell. Alright? You, I can show you all the evidence. I can show you the Bible verses. I can show you the, I can show you pictures where this thing looks like this thing and it's just a coincidence right no it's not all right you are being warned i am warning you if you are obsessed with if you are obsessed with movie stars if you're obsessed with movies if you are doing any of this if you if you are into if you're going to the catholic mass too all right you will not be going into heaven this is it's you are being hypnotized okay by the tv no for real you are be you are under the influence of the demonic realm when you when you are in a trance with the tv you sitting in front of the tv 10 hours a day is you under a trance i am not kidding you i know that seems ridiculous but you are under hypnosis what if you have a weird if you are a, a addicted to tv shows you, you know you've been watch tv shows and movies that is no joke. It's a demonic stronghold. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but that, that, is, that is how the devil really works. People think that because they're not seeing real demons running around the room, that they're not under the influence of the devil. No, you guys. The devil is smart. And he did, that's not how he works. Sometimes he'll do that. Sometimes that will happen. That happened to me. But... People think that because they're not literally seeing devils and demons running around their house, that, that they're not under the influence of the devil. You ignoring the word of God your whole life is you under the influence of the devil. All right. Me showing you Bible verses where it shows you not to do this stuff and you ignoring it is you under the influence of the devil. All right. Here's another main antichrist imager. This is Superman. He was the first superhero. And Superman is a sun god. Does he not get his power from the sun? And in the one of the Superman movies, when he saved the world, he had this he had his arms crossed like this, like in a cross. 
right? All, all by accident, right? And he's a, the sun does thing. He's a sun god, all right? He's a sun god. And the sun gods, their, their colors, they were blue, gold, and red. That's why Superman's body is blue, gold, and red. It's sun, he's a sun god. It is not okay. It doesn't matter if he's real, he's based off of something that's real. He's an archetype of a, a demonic entity, right? And also, he has the eyes of Ra. He has the eyes of Ishtar. When you have fire coming out of your mouth and your eyes. Oh yeah, he's not a demon. Look at this thing. He's not a demon. He's good. When you have fire coming out of your eyes, that's the eyes of Ra. That's the eyes of Ishtar. It's all ancient deity worship imagery. And also, I already mentioned this in another video, but... He has a diamond on his chest with an S. All right, and it, the the word diamond, demonia, and demon have the same root word. They have the same Greek root word on purpose. That's why these. That's why Superman has a diamond on his chest because he's a demon. Okay, it's not an accident. And he's an alien. It's just like layered, layered, layered warnings. That these things are not good. He's an alien. Aliens are demons. And his name is what? His name is Hellel. Kellel. His name is Hell twice. His name is Hell squared. Hell Hell is his name. I know it's with the K in front, but that's totally different, right? It's not different. Also, I don't think it's a coincidence that as these superheroes progressed in movies, they started getting scales all over their body. Like scales of a serpent. Do you think that? Do you really think that's a coincidence? It's not. They literally have serpent scales on their new, newer outfits. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Avengers. That's got some really hidden hints from you what these superheroes are, where these superheroes are coming from. It is so scary that people are not connecting these dots. Especially if you read the Bible, you're not connecting it. I know. This is not a joke. The God is saying this. Is, these are not a coincidence. These the the devil is literally telling you who has dominion, where these these superheroes come from. So the very I'm gonna talk about Iron Man. If you ever seen the very very first Iron Man, Tony Stark made Iron Man in Iraq. Iraq is Babylon. All right. He he got captured by you know some Iraqis t um, terrorists and then he made Iron Man in Iraq Iron Man was literally born in Babylon that's the symbolism that's the meaning behind this God says that's the meaning behind this Babylon is just a was a real place but it's also a metaphor for hell right so Iron Man was literally born in Babylon which is just hell and if you think that's not obvious enough this is from the first Avengers movie. This is they went to they were at some sort of party, all right? The Avengers or some, whatever, they were at some sort of party, and in this party they literally have an ancient ball statue, bull statue of Baal and Marduk right here. The Babylonian god Marduk was just was just a ball in human form basically, all right? This is Babylonian art in the movie. Do you really think that's a coincidence? Do you really think that's a coincidence? Look at this. This is this is Babylonian art inside the movie. Don't you think it's weird that they just ran that's that's just randomly in the movie? No. God says no. He's screaming at you that these things come from hell. All right? These Avengers went to some stupid party where there, I don't know, there was a ball statue there and there's Babylonian art everywhere. Give me a break if you think that's a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. This is this was just a big ball statue, ancient ball statue, and Marduk, Babylonian god, that they were having a party around. Wow. And in the Avengers movie, the older ones, uh, they, they there's you know there's this thing. That opens portals 
that opens up portals. This oh, that's just a crazy imaginary device. This literally just looks like CERN. It's literally this is CERN. Oh, that's silly. There's no there's no mechanical thing that's opening portals. This is CERN. It's not imaginary. It's not an imaginary thing. It's real. God says no. This thing is real. It's called CERN. And by the way, I really need. I forgot to mention in in my CERN video that they have been wor that they've been cracking that thing open for fifty years. Okay, I know they'll tell you that it's only been the last ten years or so they've been cracking that thing open. They've been building this thing, that thing, for a a long time since the fifties. All right, that thing they've been cracking that thing open for fifty years. All right, I don't care what they say. Oh, we just barely turned that thing on 10 years ago. No, no way. All right. Yeah, uh, so a, mechan you, uh, a machine that opens portals is a real thing. It's called CERN. It's not just an imaginary object. And this is really creepy. This is all just sigil magic. This is just black magic, okay? If you've, have you ever seen the first and maybe second Thor? There's a reason I only know the old movies because I don't really watch these movies anymore. I don't watch them anymore. But I had to go buy the movies and rewatch parts of it to make sure my memory was serving me correctly. And I wasn't just going to make up some stories from the movie. I wanted to make sure. I had to go buy the movies and go take a picture of the stuff to make sure I was, you know, to, to really make sure I was not misremembering some of this stuff. And I'm not telling you to watch these movies, but I had to rewatch them to show you that this is not, this these superheroes are demonic. It's not just, I'm not crazy, I'm not just making up stories, those things, you want, you want to be obsessed with, obsessed with these things, those things are down there, alright? I'm not crazy, that, that, those things are based off of real evil spirits. And even if they weren't, you loving an imaginary character over a real God, Jesus Christ, you will still go to hell, okay? It doesn't matter, you picking an imaginary character over a real God... This makes it worse, not better. Okay? <laughs> well, these things are just imaginary. They're not real. Doesn't matter. That makes it worse. You are picking an imaginary savior, imaginary superheroes, over the real guy who actually died for you. And that's how you will be judged, alright? Okay, that being said, this is just sigil magic. In real witchcraft, you draw a sigil. Most of the time, I think the most basic one is just a pentagram, but that's not how real, real black magic works, okay? I've never done this. I'm just telling you I read this a long time ago when I was reading up on black magic, way before I got saved. I'm not telling you to go read this stuff because it's not a good idea. <clears throat> so, in black magic, you draw a sigil on the ground for a specific demon and then they come. All right, that's not always a pentagram. Every demon has a specific symbol. And when you put the symbol, you call them and they come. That's why if you watch this Thor movie and this Batman, when you put a sigil up on the sky and he comes, that's black magic symbolism. Just like when Thor landed or whatever in the first movie and second movie, I think, he made a sigil. Okay, that's what happens in witchcraft. When you draw a sigil on the ground, or even if it's even in the sky, it doesn't matter, and they it beckons them. Thor is a demon. He's based off of a real evil spirit. Not to mention he's a god. He's a Nephilim. Alright? He's part god, part human. Thor is a proto-Germanic god. Alright? Um, and then look at this thing. It has serpents all over this, all over it. Hello? You really think Thor's a good guy? He has serpents on his sigil. So go ahead and think the it's I'm crazy for telling you these superheroes are evil spirits. They are come from hell. But in these movies, it literally it's God literally shows you. And the devil literally shows you that who belongs who these superheroes belong to. It doesn't and I know these some of these movies have good morals in them, but that's how the devil gets you, okay? He mixes up with good morals. Because he's a good liar. He mixes up the truth with lies. And so you just assume that these guys are all good. Alright? So I'm warning you. Well, you need to be careful when you're watching these movies. Because it's it this sigil, mag this sigil magic goes into your subconscious too. Alright? So yeah. Thor's sigil. Of course it has serpents all over the place. That, I'm sure he's not from the devil though. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. It's really not funny. 
But man, people need to wake up. You cannot be obsessed with superheroes. I wouldn't even watch any of their movies. The only reason I I know this stuff is because I used to watch the old ones. I don't even know. I don't even watch the newer ones. I just gather what other people have tell me and what other you know just from what I accidentally see on the internet. But you know what I mean. Okay, I was so so happy. There is one other person who has seen these superheroes in hell. Okay, it's not just me. It's not exactly exactly the same testimony, but it's very similar. Okay, and God showed him that these things, these superheroes are based off of real evil spirits, and it's not okay to even dress up like them. All right, you can watch it right here. This is the name of the title right here. He is leading humanity to hell. He talks about movie characters and video game characters. Okay, that these things are based off of real spirits in hell. It's not okay. It's not okay to to like these things. Okay. What about Star Wars and Star Trek? What are these things? They're lightsabers, right? You guys, Anakin Skywalker is still a light bearer. He's still holding a rod of light. An iron of light. This is still demonic iconography. God... You can't be obsessed with these movie stars. They God literally shows you that these things belong to the devil. And not to mention, what's his name? Anakin Skywalker? The Anakim in the Bible were the giant clans. They're the devil. They're the Nephilim. He's a Nephilim demon archetype. And Skywalker, Anakin Sky- Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, Skywalker, They would call Baal the rider of the clouds. That's why all these things have clouds and stuff behind them too. Or they're flying in the clouds. Just like Superman. Okay, because Baal was the... He was known as the rider of the clouds. Even though those clouds are really billows of smoke. That's why his name is Anakin Skywalker. It is not a coincidence. God is telling you that these things belong... All these characters... Belong to the devil.
also I really wanted to point out that UFOs are still big one-eyed giants in the sky that have the eye of Ra, the fire coming out of the eye of Ra. There's it's still demonic imagery, demonic messaging. UFOs are still one-eyed giant cloud riders. And they are chariots in the sky. Balls, chariots in the sky. Same thing. Also, why do you think it's called Netflix? Who's in the snare? Who's in the snare? Who's throwing the net? You're in the snare. Alright, you're in the net. Someone, something is casting a net and catching you when you're watching this all day. Okay, so the next time you decide to binge watch a Netflix show, instead of picking up that Bible, you better think think twice about it. You are going to regret regret wasting that time you're gonna have nothing but time in hell and you are gonna wish you had taken taken five minutes to pick up that bible so i'm not saying it's bad to watch a movie every now and then you can watch a movie every now and then you can watch a show every now and then but you better know the lord first okay this is so important you guys god uses parallelism he uses comparison he uses something from He uses something from what you already know of and compares it to the real thing so you can choose and see the difference. When you read the Bible, you can actually, it actually teaches you to see the difference. This is the open arm guy in front on top of the mountain. It's the opposite of Nimrod. This is the real chariot in the sky. It's all connected to Jesus. This is the real chariot in the sky. This is the real sun god. This is the real son of God. God uses parallelism, compare and contrast thoughts. And he teaches you which one is real. There's literally hundreds of sun sun gods in every culture. Okay, this is the only one, the only story where he died for you and didn't ask you to kill your children for them. Weird, right? So which one's the correct one? Think about this, guys. This is... You... This is the only portal. This is the only sun portal that you have that gets you to the real clouds. The real cloud rider. Alright, God says he's the real cloud rider. He's the real son of God. He's the real chariot to take you up into the sky. He uses parallelism. You have to choose. So please choose wisely and stop wasting your time and energy on movies and shows that belong to the enemy. Alright? Alright, think about this please. And thank you.